Now, what's up guys, Josh here. We're gonna be talking about lighting in this video. Lighting is one of those key and sometimes forgotten concepts that is crucial in maintaining that professional look and it can help prevent your footage from looking amateur. So in the next series of videos, we're gonna be looking at a bunch of different scenes, whether they be in music videos or who knows, maybe some films. And we're gonna break down each specific lighting setup that is within each scene. Now, before we go and break down any of those scenes, I'm gonna to need to explain to you guys three basic elements of lighting that's gonna be essential for you to know. We're going to discuss that in this video. First, we're going to talk about color temperature. Then we're going to talk about basic lighting equipment. And then I'm going to go over four rules that you've got to know and understand. Now, first things first, we have to talk about color temperature. Every light has a color temperature and color temperature is measured in Kelvin. Anything above 5000 Kelvin will have a cool color temperature. That means the light will be bluish. Anything below 5000 Kelvin will be warm. That means the light will be orangey. Now that we understand color temperature, we're going to talk about the different types of lighting equipment. Now, regardless of the type of lighting equipment that you have, you can either have an open-faced fixture or a Fresnel fixture. An open-faced fixture is just that, a fixture that is open-faced and cannot be focused. A Fresnel fixture can be focused. Now, the first light that we're gonna talk about is called a halogen light. A halogen light has a warm orange color temperature. The advantage is it can get really, really bright and it's very, very cheap to buy. The disadvantage is that it can get really, really hot and it can be dangerous if you accidentally touch it. HMI lights have a blue color temperature. The advantage is that they're very, very bright. They're brighter than halogen lights and they're a lot more efficient as far as energy goes. The disadvantage is, is that they're expensive. Fluorescent lights generally could either have a cool or a warm color temperature depending on the type of bulbs that you use. The advantage of fluorescent lights is its ability to cast very soft lighting. The disadvantage of fluorescent lights are that they aren't very strong. So say you were shooting outside in the open sun, probably won't be able to see their effect because the sun would completely outshine them. LED lights are awesome because they're able to cast either a blue or a warm cast depending on the setting that you have them on. LEDs are able to cast relatively bright light, but their disadvantage is that they're relatively expensive. And lastly, we're gonna talk about something called a practical light. Practical lights are light sources that are visible as models within your scene. Indoor examples of practical lights include lamps, light fixtures, television sets, or any other model that you've built that emits light. The next thing we're gonna talk about are gels. Gels can either be blue, called CTB gels, or orange, called CTO gels. These gels basically just cast a tint on the light depending on the color that the gels are. So now you got these things called silks. They're these massive pieces of material that are used to diffuse any light shining through it. They're usually placed in front of a light using a C-stand. Then you have these things called flags. Flags are completely black pieces of material that is meant to cut or shape light. They're placed with C-stands either to the side or above or below light to shape the direction of the light. And lastly, we're gonna go over five rules. These rules are not by any means the only rules regarding light, but they're the only rules we're gonna go over for now. The first rule we're gonna talk about is something called three-point lighting. Three-point lighting is usually used to light up a subject. It involves using three lights, two lights in the front and one light in the back. The first light in the front is at an angle and it is the brightest light called a key light. The other light is actually called a fill light. It's less bright and it fills in the shadow that's created by the key light. The light in the back is called a hairline light. That light shines at the back of the object and creates an almost outline that pops the subject or the object being filmed from the background. This leads into our second rule, which is foreground background separation. This rule ensures depth and it basically states that your foreground needs to be brighter than your background. This ensures that your foreground pops out from your background. The only exception may be a silhouette shot where your foreground is actually in the dark and your background's lit up. Separation could also be created by using a shallow depth of field to blur your background out and also by casting different colors on your foreground and your background. The third rule is soft lighting is your best friend. Now, when you're lighting up something like say a face, you always want to use soft lighting, which is why you don't want to ever film say someone at 12 noon where the sun is up right above you casting nasty shadows. So what you do is you can either use a soft light, like say a fluorescent light, or you can use a harsh light and put a silk in front of that light and that will diffuse the light and allow soft lighting to be cast onto your subject. This next rule gives a little bit of clarity to the previously mentioned rule. And that rule is that light gets softer as the light source becomes bigger. So that's why if you have a massive silk in front of a tiny light, that silk, which is massive and has a lot of surface area, is going to diffuse the light and make it softer because it has actually increased the size of the light source. 
And the last rule is that casted shadows get softer the closer the shadow caster is to the light source. For example, say you have a shot where you have a hand that is in between a floor and a light. The closer that the hand is to the light, the softer the shadow of the hand will be on the floor. And the further away from the light the hand is, the harsher the shadow will be on the floor. Guys, that's all you need to know for now, and now we're gonna start breaking down scenes and you will learn more as the series continues. Hey guys, Josh here, just to humor my curiosity, please state the city that you're watching from below.